kind of a, a luxy McNuxy at this one. It's quite high, you see. Hey all, back by popular demand, another quick voiceover video to explain how I managed to deal with the tanking within the house. So before you tank it, you just need to remove all excess rubble and other mortar etc to make it smooth before applying the tanking slurry. And then you just need to go around and just give a little bit of a, a damping to the brickwork. So give a bit of moisture for the actual tanking slurry to stick onto whilst applying it onto the wall. Then you need to carefully measure out the quantities of water that you need per um, tanking slurry that you're deciding to use. So if you're going for a full bag like I have done, I measured out the five and a half litres that's required, fresh water, poured that into my mixing bucket. Then I simply managed to apply the full bag of tanking slurry in one go. I do apologise now for this dangling cable that's in shot. Me and my partner, for some bizarre reason, didn't decide to move it out of the way, nor did we realise it was actually in the way of the shot at all. So I do apologise for that. You will see here that a load of dust gets kicked up when shoving the bag of tanking slurry in the mixing bucket. So please do wear a mask because it's, it's quite dangerous, this stuff. So I go ahead and use my plaster mixer. I move on to setting my timer for three and a half minutes as that's the required amount of time needed for five and a half litres of water to a full bag of tanking slurry. Now, you do need to make sure that you don't overly mix or under mix the slurry. Under mixing will mean that all the mixture isn't actually formed within the water and then application to the wall or whatever end destination the tanking slurry is going to end up on is not going to bond at all. And then over a mixture means that it will overwork it and again you won't have as much chemical reaction to keeping the moisture behind it at a later date. Can I just say thanks ever so much for everyone who has been sending the positive vibes on this channel so far. You know, I really try as much as I can to reply to all comments when I receive them. Sometimes for some bizarre reason YouTube don't actually tell me when I've got a notification of a comment. So sometimes I come across them a week or two later which I do apologise for. But thanks ever so much to everyone who's following us on this particular journey of redevelopment of this old building that we've got. So when coming to apply the tank in slurry, you've got three ways of doing it, which is the first is like on my previous video, you see when a professional did it, you have a tank in slurry gum and it just sprays it on the wall. As you see here, I've used a brush and you brush upwards against the brickwork or wall, however you, what you're applying it to the surface of. And the third is the trusty um, rendering tool with a trowel. So I decided to use a brush to apply the tanking slurry. That was simply because I knew how uneven this wall was and to actually just try and trowel it on would have been quite painful. So I'm simply going around here, just applying it even all over this particular wall. I am actually doing off camera another two walls, uh, but because of the underfloor heating going on, it was very important that I got these this particular wall done. Hey, and sorry that I'm interrupting the voiceover, but I thought it'd be just easy to come on site because I need to measure the moisture in the wall, so I thought I'd just take over for doing the voiceover. Now, so this is part three of the of the series that we're doing regarding the damp proof in this wall. The first was the moisture reading, the second was the dry zone, and the third is this tanking of this wall to replicate what we've done with the other parts of the building. Now, what I've done here is I put this on I would say off the top of my head about two and a half weeks ago and things so it's going to be interesting to see what the moisture reading in this particular wall was as you can remember we were going around there was beeps all over the place and it was quite high I think what I'm going to do actually is I'll get my phone out and we'll record this whilst going at the same time so this is one the floor heating pipes for upstairs so I do apologise that this is it Oh, yeah. Let's do this. 16.8, 16, 16, Ooh, dropped it, 15, 16, 13. Now if we go higher into this, 
quite high, you see. 19 in those areas, but down below where the tanking is, we're starting to read 16, which is a lot better than the 40s we were getting previously. I want to try and get right, 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 right. 18, down there. So I'd like to say that's a massive success so far on starting to damp proof this, this wall. Um, this was a very important that I got this done before this underfloor heating obviously went down, hence what all this gear is for here. This is the service, sorry, upstairs underfloor heating. But extremely pleased with what we've done. It, very, very pleased with the reading outputs. Um, I had used one bag of tanking slurry for this wall, a wall over there and a little bit behind you. and. That I will be doing the remainder of all this. It's just because of the underfloor heating going down, there's a reason I prioritised those particular areas first. So I will be replicating this. So yeah, so thanks ever so much for watching. I hope this has helped you. I hope it's given you an idea of what I've done and some actually positive readings that have come out of what I've done and gives you the confidence to have a go yourself if you've got the skill sets. So thanks ever so much and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.